John Tyler, the Accidental President. Today, we embark on a journey through American history, focusing our attention on a president often overlooked in the annals of time, John Tyler. In this lecture, we will delve into the life, presidency, and lasting impact of the man known as the Accidental President. Early Life and Career John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States, was born on March 29, 1790, in Charles City County, Virginia. He was born into a prominent Virginia family, with his father, John Tyler Sr., being a respected judge, and his mother, Mary Armistead Tyler, coming from a wealthy plantation-owning family. Tyler received a classical education, typical of the gentry class of Virginia, and attended private schools before enrolling at the College of William and Mary at the age of 12. Tyler's early life was marked by the influences of the Enlightenment and the principles of republicanism. He was greatly influenced by the political philosophy of Thomas Jefferson, a family friend and fellow Virginian. Tyler's exposure to Jefferson's ideas helped shape his own political beliefs and set him on a path toward a career in public service. After graduating from college in 1807, Tyler studied law under his father's tutelage and was admitted to the bar in 1809. He quickly established a successful law practice in Richmond, Virginia, and began his foray into politics. In 1811, at the age of just 21, Tyler was elected to the Virginia House of Delegates, marking the beginning of his long and distinguished political career. Tyler's time in the Virginia House of Delegates provided him with valuable experience and helped him establish a reputation as a skilled orator and effective legislator. He quickly rose to prominence within the state legislature, advocating for states' rights and opposing federal encroachment on state sovereignty. In 1816, Tyler was elected to the United States House of Representatives, representing Virginia's 23rd Congressional District. As a member of the House, Tyler aligned himself with the Democratic-Republican Party and continued to champion states' rights and limited government. He quickly gained a reputation as a staunch defender of Virginia's interests and a vocal critic of federal policies that he believed infringed upon the rights of the states. During his time in Congress, Tyler supported President James Madison's administration and played a key role in shaping legislation, including the rechartering of the Second Bank of the United States and the passage of the Missouri Compromise. His tenure in the House was marked by his unwavering commitment to his principles and his willingness to challenge the status quo. In 1825, Tyler was elected as the governor of Virginia, serving a single one-year term. As governor, he focused on issues such as internal improvements and education reform, laying the groundwork for future progress in the state. Despite his relatively short tenure as governor, Tyler's leadership left a lasting impact on Virginia's political landscape. Overall, John Tyler's early life and career were characterized by a deep commitment to the principles of states' rights, limited government, and individual liberty. His experiences in the Virginia House of Delegates, the United States House of Representatives, and as governor of Virginia shaped his political beliefs and prepared him for the challenges he would face later in his career, culminating in his unexpected ascension to the presidency of the United States. Presidency. John Tyler's presidency from 1841 to 1845 was marked by a series of challenges and controversies that tested both his leadership abilities and his commitment to his principles. As the first vice president to ascend to the presidency due to the death of a sitting president, Tyler faced the daunting task of filling the shoes of his predecessor, William Henry Harrison, while also grappling with the factionalism within his own party, the Whigs. Let's delve into the key aspects of John Tyler's presidency and how he navigated the turbulent waters of American politics during his time in office. Ascension to the Presidency John Tyler became president on April 4, 1841, following the untimely death of President William Henry Harrison, who succumbed to pneumonia just 31 days into his term. Tyler's accession to the presidency was unprecedented, and presented him with the challenge of establishing his legitimacy as a leader. Despite being a member of the Whig Party, 
Tyler's commitment to his own interpretation of the Constitution often put him at odds with his party's agenda, leading to conflicts with Whig leaders in Congress. Constitutional Interpretation and Veto Politics Tyler's presidency was marked by his steadfast adherence to his interpretation of the Constitution, often clashing with his own party, the Whigs, and Congress. One of the most notable examples was his veto of the recharter of the Bank of the United States. Despite pressure from Whig leaders, Tyler believed that the proposed bank was unconstitutional and vetoed the bill twice, ultimately leading to his expulsion from the Whig Party. Annexation of Texas One of the most significant achievements of Tyler's presidency was the annexation of Texas in 1845. Tyler was a strong supporter of annexation, viewing it as a means of expanding the nation's territory and securing its interests in the West. Despite facing opposition from abolitionists and Northerners concerned about the expansion of slavery, Tyler pursued annexation through diplomatic means, ultimately securing a treaty with Texas shortly before the end of his presidency. Foreign Policy Challenges Tyler's presidency also saw its fair share of foreign policy challenges, including tensions with Great Britain over the border between Maine and Canada. The Webster-Ashburton Treaty of 1842, negotiated by Secretary of State Daniel Webster and British diplomat Lord Ashburton, helped resolve the border dispute and averted the threat of war between the two nations. However, the treaty was heavily criticized by Tyler's political opponents, further exacerbating tensions within the country. Legacy and Historical Assessment John Tyler's presidency is often remembered as a tumultuous period in American history, characterized by political strife and division. His steadfast commitment to his principles, particularly his interpretation of the Constitution and states' rights, earned him both admirers and detractors. While some view Tyler as a principled leader who stood firm in the face of opposition, others criticize him for his perceived stubbornness and inability to compromise. Annexation of Texas Texas had declared independence from Mexico in 1836 following the Texas Revolution, establishing itself as the Independent Republic of Texas. However, Texas struggled to maintain stability and faced threats from Mexico, which refused to recognize its independence. Many Texans sought annexation by the United States as a means of ensuring their security and economic prosperity. Tyler's Support for Annexation John Tyler was a staunch supporter of westward expansion and believed that annexing Texas would not only strengthen the United States, but also fulfill its manifest destiny to expand across the North American continent. Tyler saw Texas as an essential acquisition that would provide valuable land for settlement and access to the Gulf of Mexico. Diplomatic Efforts Tyler's administration initiated diplomatic efforts to secure the annexation of Texas. Negotiations with Texas officials resulted in the signing of the Annexation Treaty in April 1844, which outlined the terms of Texas's entry into the Union as a new state. However, the treaty faced opposition in the Senate, where it failed to receive the necessary two-thirds majority for ratification. Election of 1844 the annexation of Texas became a central issue in the presidential election of 1844. Democratic candidate James K. Polk campaigned on a platform of annexation, while Whig candidate Henry Clay opposed immediate annexation, preferring to address the issue diplomatically. Polk's victory in the election was seen as a mandate for annexation. Joint Resolution of Congress In his final months in office, President Tyler pursued an alternative strategy for annexation through a joint resolution of Congress, which required only a simple majority for approval. The joint resolution was passed by Congress and signed into law by Tyler on March 1, 1845, just days before the end of his term. Consequences The annexation of Texas led to heightened tensions with Mexico, which viewed the annexation as a violation of its sovereignty. Mexico refused to recognize Texas's independence or its annexation by the United States, leading to the outbreak of the Mexican-American War in 1846. 
The war ultimately resulted in the cession of vast territories to the United States, including present-day California, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Legacy. The annexation of Texas had profound consequences for the United States, shaping its territorial expansion and contributing to the tensions that led to the Civil War. It also had significant implications for the indigenous peoples of the region, whose lands were often forcibly taken by American settlers. Despite these complexities, the annexation of Texas remains a pivotal moment in American history, illustrating the nation's relentless pursuit of westward expansion and its impact on the indigenous peoples and nations of the continent. Later, Years and Legacy After leaving the presidency in 1845, John Tyler returned to private life but remained active in politics and public affairs until his death. Retirement and Political Activity Following his presidency, Tyler retired to his plantation, Sherwood Forest, in Charles City County, Virginia. Despite stepping away from the national stage, he remained engaged in state and local politics, advocating for states' rights and Southern interests. Tyler also continued to correspond with political leaders and write articles on political matters, maintaining his influence within the Democratic Party. Confederate sympathies and Civil War involvement. As sectional tensions escalated in the years leading up to the Civil War, John Tyler's sympathies increasingly aligned with the Southern cause. He opposed the policies of President Abraham Lincoln and supported secession efforts in the South. In 1861, Tyler was elected to the Virginia Secession Convention and played a key role in the decision for Virginia to secede from the Union. He later served in the Confederate House of Representatives, advocating for the Confederate cause until his death. John Tyler's presidency is often overshadowed by his more famous predecessors, yet his tenure in office left a lasting impact on American history. Tyler's commitment to states' rights and limited government shaped the political landscape of the antebellum era and influenced subsequent debates over the balance of power between the federal government and the states. His pursuit of westward expansion, including the annexation of Texas, contributed to the territorial growth of the United States and set the stage for future conflicts with Mexico. Despite his controversial presidency and support for the Confederacy, John Tyler's legacy endures as a pivotal figure in American history. His steadfast adherence to his principles, even in the face of opposition, earned him both admiration and criticism. Tyler's involvement in the Confederate cause during the Civil War reflects the complexities of his legacy, highlighting his commitment to his Southern roots and his willingness to defend what he believed to be the rights of the Southern states. John Tyler's later years were marked by continued involvement in politics and public affairs, culminating in his support for the Confederacy during the Civil War. While his presidency may have been tumultuous and his legacy controversial, Tyler's impact on American history cannot be understated. He remains a figure of interest and debate, his life and legacy serving as a reminder of the complexities of leadership and the enduring struggle for liberty and self-determination in American society. Thank you for your time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video.